All right, in this video, I want to talk about a couple things. Um, first is I want to look a little bit more closely at object types and something called type-based dispatch. Um, dispatch is a fancy word for um, kind of running a function when we call it. And what we've seen now is that we have these two methods with the same name. And can we kind of automatically figure out um, which one we want to call or dispatch uh, when, we, when we say speak? So I'll be talking about that. Um, and then second, I'm going to be talking about these things called receivers and constructors and just kind of how to make our code a little bit more um, uh, polished and professional. Okay, so the problem I want to introduce is, has to do with calling the right version of a method uh, for a given object. So here you can see I'm calling the dog version for dog1 and the cat version for c1. And um, that works fine, but it's bad because, well, let me give you an example. Let's say I have all my pets like this. I have dog one, dog two, and um, and then C one, and uh, and let's say I want to make them all speak. Let me get rid of this now. I make all my animals speak. So I'm going to say for pet and pets, um, I am going to say well, well, I guess let me do this. I'm going to say cat dot speak pet and um, I have an extra call in there. Uh, that's not really great, right? Because I guess I'm calling the cat version uh, on all three, right? Um, whereas if I call dog, again, not great because the dog doesn't, version doesn't work for this. So it's like, well, what did I put here? Um, there's no obvious answer, right? It kind of depends on what type it is. And uh, and so this is not great. So this is, this is really kind of, uh, uh, I am hard coding. The, the type, right, what it is. And, and so what I'd really like to have is some sort of type-based dispatch. Uh, when pet is a cat, it should call this version. And uh, when pet is a dog, it should call the other version. And so one way I could do this is like this. I could say something like, um, you know, if the type if the type of the pet uh, is, a, is a cat, then what? I guess I'll call the cat version. And again, this is bad code, right? So I'm eventually going to work towards something better. Um, else, Ella, the type of the pet is equal to the dog. Well, then I call the dog version. And, and that actually uh, works, right? Um, I could get them all to speak. Um, it's not great. I mean, what if I add more addables? Uh, I could forget to add them to this shade. Uh, you, you know, so that's not great. Um, or maybe this code starts to get really ugly, right? So this is version one, not great. And so I'm just going to comment all this out, like so. Um, maybe let me just leave it there for a minute. You, you know what I'm noticing here is that when I uh, am checking this type, I know that the type. Is the same thing as cat, right? I'm using cat out here. So instead of saying cat out here, you know what I could do is I could just say type right here. And the same thing out here. If I come to this path, I know that the type is just dog. And so instead of saying dog out here, I could have said type of uh, type of pet out here. It's actually going to lead us to the better version too. So uh, two is better. And uh, let me just comment all this out. What I'm going to say is type of pet. So this will either be dog or cat. And so I'm going to call either the dog version of cat of speak or the pet version of speak. And I'm going to do that on my pet. And that works better, right? So I can see all of this mass reduces down to here. And, and this is going to work even if I have 100 different types of pets, right? So so this is better, and, uh, and this is an example of uh, type type based dispatch. Type based dispatch. Now, wh why is this not the best version? Uh, you see that there's some redundancy here. Uh, the redundancy is that I'm using at for two things. I'm using it as this first uh, um, argument that I'm passing it, and I'm using it to um, to determine what version of the speak method I want. And it turns out that uh, Python gives us a shorter way to do this. We can just say pet, 
dot speak path. Say behavior. Oh, uh, but it's still type based dispatch. Right, and so this is the best version, right? This is version three. This is the best one. And, and so this gets weird, right? It's kind of hard to get used to this, I think, for a lot of people. But in your head, you should just always be mentally equating this with this, right? When I put, um, oh, sorry, this is the, the version. Let me just make more this and make sure it works. So you should be, it, it does, right? You should be equating this with that. When I put an object in front of a call to a method, um, I use it for two things. I, I use it as the first argument, and I use it to figure out what version of that method I want to run. Whether that be the cat version or the dog version. All right, so these two are the same. Kind of keep that in mind. That's, that's something worth putting in your notes and kind of really internalizing. Okay, so I'm going to reduce all this now, down now. Um, so this is great. Um, I want to think about it a little bit more. I just kind of, uh, what, what exactly is happening here? When I, uh, when I come up here, right, and I look at, say, cat, right, so let's say pet, I'm currently on C1, so let's say that that is a cat. Uh, I, I figure out that I'm calling this version, and then, even though I don't have anything in these parentheses, I still am passing in one argument. This passes in one argument, the cat, and that one argument is pet, right? So the first argument is outside. Anything inside of here um, starts with the second version. Okay. Um, let me let me give another example here. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, actually. Um, uh, let's say that I have a, a function up here. Well, uh, uh, let's do this. I call it. Um, I'll call it. Oh, let me think. I'm gonna call it birthday. Okay. And uh, and I'll have something called B day count, which is normally one. Um, and uh, I want to be passing in dog as usual. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the dog's age whenever the birthday function is called. Right. So I'm going to say dog dot age plus equal B day count. Right. So so normally it's one. Right. The dog had a birthday count when older. Maybe if we missed the dog's birthday for a year, we would call this and we would pass in. Two. It's a little bit contrived, but I realize that. Um, I'm also just trying to delete the cat for now. Uh, I'm trying to just work with this example up here. Okay, so I have all of this, and um, maybe I can get down to one dog. Uh, let, let me call off the dog.age, and then I'm going to say dog1.birthday. And let, let's say we have three birthdays. So I guess Fido started at one. If you have three birthdays, and you become four. And then I'm going to call off the age again. I'm going to run this, uh, and, and it works just fine. So, so let's just, you know, I want to walk through this slowly because this is kind of weird if you haven't seen it before. So down here, uh, I'm calling the birthday method, and I have two arguments. This is, the, this is the first argument, and then this is the second argument. So this first argument goes up to here, right? So whatever object dog1 refers to, that goes into the dog parameter. And then three goes into the B day count. Right? So there's always kind of one more argument than you expect here. And um, and if I did something like this, right? If I said um, let's say I said something like this, sometimes I get these confusing methods. It says birthday takes one to two positional arguments. Well, why one to two? Well, it needs this one and this one, so either one or two. And I gave it three, right? And so when I look at this, you know, it looks like I only gave it two. But I gave it three because I also have this up there. So make sure that you're kind of lining those up properly. It's trickier than it used to be. Okay, so that's type-based dispatch. Um, other thing here is that uh, this first parameter has a special name. That's the receiver. Right, so I'm just going to make a note here. Uh, first parameter is receiver. And I can call whatever I want, but in Python, the tradition is to call it self. Like, that's what you'll always see and what you should always do, right? So I'm going to put self here, self. I mean, yeah, it's just a convention, right? I'm going to do all of that. And, um, and then the same thing down here. 
right? That's what I call that first parameter. And um, oh, I never really fixed this, did I? Put this back. Okay, so that's all good. Um, that receiver name is itself. And, um, and then one more thing I want to make you aware of is I can have one method call another method. So let's say I do something like this. Let's say I say I have a method called is puppy. And so I may have self, right, is my receiver. And um, let, let's just define a puppy as any dog that's under two. So I'm going to return self.age is less than two. And, um, and so whatever gets passed in, right, works just like that. And so now if I want to, right, I can try to call is puppy down here. And, uh, and remember, I don't want to put anything inside of the parentheses because, well, if I have a special syntax that works, this isn't going to work just like that, right? If I, if I try to do this and I try to make my dog speak, right? If I start saying dog one that speak, uh, I, I crash here, right? Because is puppy is not defined. And why is is puppy not defined? Because even when I'm inside a, a method and I, and I do this, it's not assuming that it can see these other methods inside of the same class. Even here, I have to say something like dog dot is puppy, right? Which would actually, well, the reason it's not working is that it, it's not the right syntax, right? I want to really say self dot puppy, right? In this case, well, whatever object I'm calling speak on, I'm also going to call it is puppy in, right? And then it works just fine. Right? So you're going to see that a lot when methods call other methods the same object, they'll say self dot something. Uh, that's going to be very common. Okay, um, one last thing here is that I want to talk about these two lines. So this one is an example of, of um, instantiation, is a fancy name for it. I have to think for a moment there how to spell that. And then the second step, right, so, so instantiation uh, creates an object. Uh, this one is initialization, and initialization sets up our attributes, right? Those are kind of like the new, the two steps to, um, to kind of creating a, a, a useful object. And uh, it turns out that there's actually a nice way to combine these two into one. And actually, you, you know what I'm noticing here is I actually lost my init method. Let me just throw that back. So it's not confusing, right? So I'm initializing the dog with the name and age. And what was I doing? I said dog on name equals name. Drawing that age equals age. And, and, and I guess like I would have noticed that if I had done a kernel restart um, and I'd actually deleted it. I kind of deleted that along with the cat. Okay, so how, how can I combine these two in, into one step? And, uh, and, and really that's kind of a question of how can I make this part of this creation? Right, so if I want to make this a method, I can put it inside here. And at this point, it's just a regular method, All right? So, um, you know, let me just change this to self. This will make it a regular method. And and so if I do that, then I could say down here, I could say dog one dot init and that, and then I don't have to pass in that there. So that works fine. But if I want to combine these um, into just one step like this, right? If I want to kind of move this up here and do both of these things at once, well, what I'd really like is when I run this line of code, I want my init to be called automatically. And there's a special name for methods that uh, get called automatically, and the special name is just, well, it's a special method. And the next lecture, we're going to be learning about lots of special methods. And uh, they all kind of have the same format. The special method name becomes an underscore, underscore, and then something and an underscore underscore. And there's certain ones that you can have and, and they all get called automatically even when you are uh, kind of explicitly calling it. And so if I call it like this, then this line of code is going to do two things. It will, it will, uh, it will both instantiate and initiate by calling my net. I'm going to do that. And, and so that works great. And, and so, this is kind of another funny case, right? I guess when I was um, uh, when I was doing when I say dog dot speak here, right? Dog ends up being the first argument into here, right? So dog lands in self. Now, 
and net is going to call automatically, right? So I, I can see where name comes from. Name that goes to here, and, uh, and and then the age goes to here. Where is self coming from, right? I, I don't I don't have anything before that dot and then and net. And well, that's because it's a special method. What happens when I run this is that Python creates that new object, and then the first time I see that new object, it's running directly to the self. Right, okay, so Python creates a new object, passes it into the subnet, so I can do all of this stuff. And then it also returns that new object to me. Right, so kind of trickier, it kind of breaks the usual pattern of methods, uh, but that's how we'll um, kind of initialize our, our, um, our object. And there's a special name for this, this kind of um, uh, initializer method, and, and the general name for it is a constructor. Constructor is a method that does this initial setup um, uh, on an object. 